Hey guys, Robbie Ray here. <clears throat> We're going to um, attempt to put this uh, pickup coil in this distributor here that uh, Ford calls it a PIP sensor. Or no, uh, yeah, Ford calls it a PIP sensor. When I got it at the auto parts store, they just called it a pickup coil. So this one was um, Duralast. It was like uh, 39 bucks. So uh, the other week I had to rescue my son on the side of the road because he has a 95 F-150 also and this was his and his completely died. He had no spark. So just real quick, um, I took some measurements. Uh, mine still works. Here's my distributor right here. We're gonna, I'm gonna work on it in a minute. But my truck has a symptom that's, the best way I could describe it is that when you're driving like, kind of cruising on the highway, you can feel it kind of go, uh -uh, uh -uh, uh -uh, like skip a beat like that. And it does have a code, um, has a code 212, which is the code for this uh, sensor. So I went ahead and just for the heck of it, because it might help somebody, um, you see the orientation of this plug and for no particular reason, I just faced uh, the three terminals up and the four on the bottom. If you see, I made a drawing here that sort of sort of matches it. So uh, all the writing that you see in the black pen is the readings from the brand new sensor. So I have one lead on ground, like that ground ring you see uh, I got written right here. So one meter lead on that set on ohms the brand new one on green wire ran red 5.88 5.88 and 5.88 my distributor i'm not saying this is bad i'm just saying that for example mine reads the one i'm about to switch out reads this higher ohms number 890 890 890 so i don't know if that means it's bad but Unless I get into it more with uh, live voltage readings later, these are just ohms readings. So it's possible it may help you some. Another thing is, um, and by the way, I, I found this one. I knew I'll include this in case you guys got to blow up the image of it. This is all the different um, little ignition modules that mount on the fender well there. And the difference between the gray one and the black one and all that. All that nonsense so I'll just put it in there in case you need it there you go so I went ahead and um, when we took my sons apart I've done distributors before and they're always really tough to get this gear off and I've done it different ways you know I've done it at work with a shop press and all kind of crap but I've been wanting one of these kits anyway this is the Harbor Freight um, clamshell puller kit comes with the big one well that's not really big it's medium really but and the smaller one and a bunch of little extensions and doodads so I think it's going to work a heck of a lot nicer when we did my son's uh, he was broken down on the road so we, we had to we kind of butchered at his a little more than I would care to admit but I did off camera you'll see these um, two roll pins and I was just trying to save time and they just go uh, here and here Oops. And if you ever get a chance, by the way, you typically don't see these in the cheaper brands like um, Craftsman and stuff, but these are, I didn't even know these existed for many years, but these are actual roll pin punches. You see the tip on it? It's not just a punch. And let me get the focus. That little tip on it really helps in just keeping it centered. Uh, I got a whole set of them. These are like Matco or something. Not a big deal, but just putting it out there for those of you who might always, uh, you know, kind of struggle with your punches slipping off the end. They won't slip on these ones, but I just think they're cool because they just they stay real nice and centered. But anyway, because we um, we really butchered up my sons a little bit, <laughs> we didn't have the right stuff on hand, and uh, even though we had a piece of aluminum on the shaft here, as we we had to kind of beat it out, you know. I had the gear in these uh, lead vice jaws, which are nice, you know, it didn't hurt the gear, but. We ultimately kind of beat the crap out of this shaft, and I, I was not happy with it. We had to grind it a little bit. 
because this goes down into your, uh, it drives your oil pump. So this time I'm going to try at least to be a little smarter and I found an Allen socket that fits it. So I feel as though I'm not going to uh, butcher up on that too much. And then let's go ahead and uh, set you guys up here. And, and we will see, we'll see together here. Oh, maybe that's too close. We'll see together if this thing, uh, this puller here is going to work as I expect. By the way, it does not come with this little end. I got this off of a different cooler of mine, so it just comes with this little, I don't know if you can see that, but little ball bearing end. So let's see how this works out and how much I'm gonna fumble because we're on camera here. But I would suggest, if, even if you don't wanna put out the 50 bucks for this, um, you know, maybe some of the other parts stores have loaners or I would rig up something, whatever, right? Take a grinder, cut a big nut in half and make two two halves to get under the gear and, and rig something up with a press or, I would just do something, don't, don't go and kind of wrap on that shaft like we did, because it really, I was really not happy about it. I mean, like I said, it's working, but you know, that thing's driving your, uh, that is driving your oil pump and the last thing you want is for that thing to give it up when you don't know it and then you're real deep crap right, this is a little bit crooked for some reason it's hard to afraid i realize that but even though i got it all i think i have it pretty equally tightened but it looks a little bit a little bit skewed which is never a good thing for pulling something let's see what happens By the way, his was just, I, I couldn't even believe how tight it was. I, I know that they they more than likely heat them and drop them on, is what I'm going to do too. I'll show you that when I get to it. Jesus. Oh, man. Man, is that tight. I hope it doesn't break it. Oh, oh geez. Alright guys, 25 years sitting in the same spot. Oh jeez. Nice right, coming. Oh. By the way, I seen a bunch of videos <laughs> and everybody conveniently skipped the part of taking the gear off and putting it on. <laughs> they came back on camera after it was already done. That's why I'm doing this for you. Is it whether I succeed or fail you're gonna you're gonna see it here right now okay there we go plus if i forget which direction it goes on i can always refer back to my own video right or anything like that okay the other hard part we had was uh you know i did some studying and you can get these things up to uh like a lot of machinists say you know, five or 600 degrees isn't gonna hurt it, which I agree with that. I had thoughts of possibly my um, barbecue grill, because they get up to like 500 degrees. Let it get as hot as it can in there. I was thinking, uh, you know, maybe I'll go with that, or uh, just like a propane torch and one of these, hang on. One of these temperature guns, which I, I might do because I'm kind of impatient. So I might just heat it up and all that so now when we did my sons we just we just kind of went on you know we're both mechanics so we just instinctively heated it up and it was fine but the problem was we we got it on but we were a little bit off on the alignment hole just a little bit and then of course it it locked on again and we didn't have the puller and i didn't want to beat the heck out of it getting it off again so really the whole thing just didn't go as smoothly as i would have liked also i should note that for some strange reason, these aftermarket ones, because everybody says, oh, just, you know, buy a $100 aftermarket distributor. Well, one weird thing is all of them just have only the gear on it. And Ford has, this collar is pressed on too. Now, I guess the aftermarket thinks it's not necessary, but Ford certainly thought it was necessary. So when I look at them online and I see all the photos of the aftermarket ones, they all look funny to me because they're just a gear on the end of a, 
it looks like a real skinny shaft. And secondly, um, I've been reading a lot of information, and, and I'm not a drag racer or any of that kind of crap, but um, people that change their cams out often, you know, are uh, always have a concern whether the distributor gear is going to match their cams, especially aftermarket cams and stuff. So apparently there's like three different types of gears that this can be. One is a bronze, I believe, one is cast iron, and one is steel. Now, this looks like steel to me because it's not rough in any way like cast iron would be. But the point I'm trying to get at is I know for a fact this is going to match my cam perfectly because it's been in there for 25 years. So to me, I think it's it's worth trying to put a new sensor in your original distributor and keep it, you know, keep it from getting uh, crazy on you. All right, guys, let's go ahead and hopefully don't make this video too long. If it does, maybe I'll try to edit it, but I have to pull this collar off as well. So let's just see how that goes. You're going to see it here. <laughs> Right on camera, even if it gets if it gets a bit dicey. I want to be one of the people that just edits out all the uh, rough patches, right? Oh boy, we got a ways to go. Don't we? Might have been smarter to uh, get a little closer first. Oh, that's awfully sloppy. Look at that. Oh boy. <laughs> Maybe I should have got the extended warranty, huh? That's awfully sloppy for uh, threads on a puller. Oh, come on now. Uh, you know what? Uh, I don't know if it's going to get under that. Oops. I think we got to turn these jaws around. All right, guys, I'm just going to, I'm going to try to splice these together. I don't want to leave you hanging for that long. Okay, guys. I did a little re-rigging. And uh, I had to take the entire clamshell and flip it over. But just so in case you don't know, I, I hate to include too many details for you guys that may know this, but you never know. Some of you might not know. You know, they have a... Uh, one side dished out hopefully you can see me on the camera and the other side's flat so in this case for me to uh for me to be able to get under that bushing i had to you know flip the whole clamshell around so i didn't want to bore you with all that crap now the nice thing is i think this is a lot looser because i can dang near in fact i can see it coming you know it's it's a snug fit but i don't even know if i would even need to pull it out it's coming right off so let me make sure I'm not dragging the shaft with the tool. No, I'm not. Because, you know, if you, sometimes if you tighten these in too much as a tool, you don't want to gouge and drag up the uh, the shaft or whatever it is you're working on. So the good news is this is coming off pretty easy. I think when we did my son's, even that was real tight. But again, I would, <laughs> you know, I didn't really look down inside the distributor mounting hole to, to see what that pushing is for but I don't know it, it, when I see the pictures like I said of, of the aftermarket ones they just they look funny to me because they don't have that and it looks like a, a long skinny shaft of the gear in the end I don't know it may not but may not be a problem at all but I don't know just you know we'd like to believe that the engineers are doing stuff for a reason although we all know that that's not really true okay all right we got off Track here. Uh, that's my fault. I'm getting a little crooked here. A little tech tip when you're trying to pull anything, the straighter it is, the better. What you can see, <laughs> it's not too straight. So I'm not sure if it's this fine quality tool. Or it could be, a hey, could be the user. All right. Hey, uh, cheap clamshell is better than having no clamshell, right? I 
I'm not spending three or four hundred bucks on the snap on truck for one. No offense, snap on. They do make good stuff. <laughs> All right. There you go. Okay. So, like I said, now, uh, let me see what size this was. Quarter inch. So this is a quarter inch uh, Allen socket, but I, I also was thinking of the option of just taking a crappy Allen wrench and cutting a piece of it off and sticking it down in there and having enough, you know, hanging out to, to push on. Because like I said, when we, when we did his, we used... Uh, I mean, at least we tried, you know, but we had to use something soft like that, like a piece of aluminum. And, uh, oh, I just, uh, I just don't like beating on things like that. I mean, I, you can see that thing's not too thick. All right, so now, the grand finale, it's gonna, should come right out right now. So I had this pinched um, in these lead jaws, by the way. So you could, you could use two blocks of wood or two pieces of plywood or something, or even, uh, Sometimes at work, I use two pieces of aluminum angle. You know, ang well, it's not angle iron because it's aluminum, but you know, like aluminum angle in my uh, vice jaws, so you're not gonna dig that up. So now, with all the, oh, that's just a piece. <laughs> Even got me from there. So now, all things being right. But by the way, just in case you're thinking, I'll just take the piece off the end. Well, this piece is, I guess, I don't even know. I guess it's swedged on there with a machine or something like that because there's a little reluctor wheel. Like, yeah, that comes off, but that's it. <laughs> I'll probably bet it now. But. So once this is out, which you can see it is, um, so now there is the actual sensor. and it can. But by the way, I don't know why, you know, couldn't they have made it like a split, you know, the piece be split somehow so you could just sneak it out no of course not right you know how they go they make things that you know uh, they don't care about it. 10 years later they want to sell you a new truck all right guys I'm gonna cut this until I uh, come back to putting it back on I will say in case you don't watch it all or I don't get to it when we put this back my son's back together it would have been what I'm gonna do this time I'm gonna make a very light scribe mark Right, not like a marker because that'll probably rub right off, but like a light scribe with a little scratch all. You probably can't see it. So that when I when this is hot, because you only got a couple seconds to do it. When it's hot, I I can be lined up before I even try to go down. That's where we went wrong. We were just like a fraction off, and then we were just you know just trying to get it to come around, and just the whole thing got messy. But and none of us like to uh, butcher up our parts, right? All right, guys, I will be back for the uh, reinstallation portion. Oh, guys, guys, guys. You know, there's always got to be something, right? So I went to clean out. Uh, there was a lot of gunk in this area right here. Boy, that camera's clear. I went to clean out the gunk in here, and, I, you know, I noticed, oh, what's this? You know, I'm thinking there's a big blob of grease, right? Yeah. Not a big blob of grease, it's a completely wasted oil seal. I mean, look at it. It's falling apart, <laughs> falling apart my hand as I touch it, right? 25 years old. So now, by the way, this is this the rest of the seal, and it was, of course, it was mashed into a blind hole like that. You see the ledge down there? So you can't take something from the other side and hit it out. So I got just enough, just so you know, in case you guys are faced with this too. Um, I mean, it put a couple little dings in the aluminum, but it's, it's not a place where it's important. But there was just enough of this um, inner lip hanging in where I was able to, you know, get in it like that way. And then you can probably see by the dents, I had to turn the distributor and do it like a bunch of different ways to get it out because you see that green stuff? That's a... Um, that's like an adhesive that when that seal is banged in, uh, you know, it becomes a little bit hot for a moment. And then that green stuff, or sometimes they're red, uh, you know, it's like a glue. It's like an adhesive, so it's not really in there, you know. So I put a couple little dings from the screwdriver, but of course it's in a superficial place, so it doesn't matter. 
the bigger problem I have facing me right now is where do I get a seal? <laughs> you know, I'm about to go inside right now and start Googling uh, distributor shaft seal because I, I don't know. I mean, I guess it makes sense now. Maybe this, uh, remember I said Ford has this extra collar, so maybe it, it also serves as a, uh, an extra splash shield. Because the seal would have been uh, in here. And of course, it would have had a rubber lip seal inside of it. And then I, I guess that's a splash shield, is what that is. So, you know, <laughs> obviously I don't want to heat that gear on and then pull it off again. So I guess I'm stuck for now, guys. I'm gonna have to, um, I'm gonna have to get back to you. I would say though to make sure you check yours, because I think that's only a, there's only a little bit of splash of oil I think in there really. But you know, does anybody really want oil creeping up their distributor and up into the top? You know, it's probably not worth it. I just did want to point out though. Let's see if I can get this on camera that. I got the same center in there, but just make sure, because another guy said that his whole problem was stemming from uh, this screw right here is the ground for the whole sensor. So one guy I was reading, his whole problem was that was a poor ground. I guess he had a lot of corrosion right there. So I cleaned mine up underneath the screw before I even put it in. So I made sure it's a really good ground right there. And also these are in case you're rummaging around and all your tools you can't seem to find it and Ford loves doing this is a 5.5 millimeter screws so I don't know if there's a English equivalent to that but a lot of sets don't have a 5.5 so if you're going crazy look for it that's why all right guys I will be back uh, when I find the seal uh, somehow or another even if I have to measure the dimensions and get it some other way to a uh, you know company that just sells seals but uh, we'll be back for the uh, the part you probably want to see the most which is the heat of the heating of the gear and the placing it back on the shaft again all right guys catch you in a few okay guys we're back the exciting conclusion of this distributor job here um, you know I, I did a couple things off camera because they were pretty simple uh, <coughs> but I'll go over them <coughs> Excuse me. anyway um, you know of course I put the new sensor in and uh, before I dropped the shaft in um, mine had a bad seal at the bottom real bad like it basically fell apart but when I got it out I don't know if you can read this uh, maybe just in case you need it you it did have numbers on it um, that one in the middle looks like an N, but there's actually two ones. And then I crossed that number over, you see the Ford emblem, so that's like a proprietary Ford part. I crossed the number over, I did tons of research, and I found, uh, here's the actual number, but I crossed out what I thought was an N to an 11. Uh, SKF uh, Seal Company, that's their number. I did find them on Granger, uh, all kind of places, but it was it's Saturday right now, so <laughs> I really wanted to find one today. But uh, which I did, I'll get to that in a minute. But SKF did have all the dimensions, so you know they're roughly saying uh, it's a quarter inch thick. Um, you know, was that a tenth of a thousandth less than an inch? It's basically one inch on the outside. And they're saying that the shaft is uh, just over a half inch. So the seal, the hole in the seal is about a half inch and the shaft is a little bit thicker. Anyway, um, I couldn't find one anywhere. And I was just about to give up and I called one last place at literally 11.55 and the place closed at 12. <laughs> and this awesome dude, I, I usually don't give uh, shout outs, but uh, this company right here, I have written down Excel Hydraulics in Clarksboro, New Jersey. Awesome company. I mean, this guy not only found me one by the dimensions I gave him. It's a little different style, but it doesn't matter. He found them. Actually, gave me two of them. And he stayed 
like a half hour late for me to come and get it on a Saturday. I mean, I just I can't say enough about how awesome that is. But thanks again to uh, Joe from Excel. And uh, so keep me going here. So I, uh, you know, I put a little bit of grease. There's a, a bushing up in here. So I put a little bit of grease on it because uh, it's probably the only lube it's ever going to see, I imagine. You know? So this collar, um, it wasn't super tight. I was able to put that on by uh, having a little piece of pipe that was, you know, the size of that out of Flandair and just carefully knocked it on, put the wool pin in. But the real fun is going to begin here now. I tried to give myself every advantage I could, right? I have my temperature gun ready. I got the gear hanging on this piece of coat hanger. Um, I scribed a mark on it. Let's see if I focus for me. No, there you go. Not, not that little notch, that was for a different reason I put that, but that little straight scribe. And then I scribed the little line. If you can see it. Not, you might not be able to see it in your light yet. So yeah, with a little file, I scribed the line, uh, lined up with the hole, so you can see the other line too, the rest of the way. Over there. So give me every advantage I can to get this thing on quickly once it gets hot. And also, I got my roll pin punch ready. In my case, I'm lucky that, like I said before in the other video, these are quality punches, so they, the fit is, is literally like perfect. If you don't have that, because, you know, I want to get the gear on while it's hot, and then I want to quickly slide this in because there's not much slop in this at all. If you don't have something like that, I would suggest finding something that fits this hole pretty well. Maybe a eight-penny finish nail, that you sand down a little bit, something. I'd have something on the ready. So anyway, I think that's enough jibber jabber. Let's see. Let's see if I can get this thing to work. Right, here we go. And I got a set of welding gloves too. So hopefully, I'm gonna get this thing up to about five or six hundred degrees. We're gonna see if we can make this happen. Two seventy five. We're really hoping I don't mess this up, guys. If I do, I gotta pull it back off again. I don't really want to do that. I've done it before many years ago when I was a little younger, but it's been a long time. I had more guts to wing it then. Three fifty. I don't know why I'm pickier now. What happens when you get old, guys? You get pickier. 4 something. 450. 487. It's also winter, guys, so this I might go up to about 6 because this thing is going to cool down so darn fast. The minute I take the heat away, it's like pretty cold in my shop here. You see, I'm wearing a coat. But everybody else seems to skip this crucial step on the video, so I'm doing it here for you guys right now. Uh, almost 500. I forget, if you look online, uh, machinists and stuff will tell you how many thousands of an inch this will grow uh, based on the size of the piece and the temperature and all this stuff. I'm just hoping to get about three, four seconds, five seconds time frame out of it. Six something. All right, guys. Wish me luck. About to burn the crap out of my hands, too. All right, guys, that was a piece of cake. There you go. Hopefully, you can see that. Yep. That was a piece of cake, guys. All right. There you go. I'm going to try to aim this at myself. I don't have GoPro, but 
There you go, guys. It wasn't that hard. If you're nervous about the torch, uh, like I was saying on the other video, maybe put it in your barbecue grill and torque that thing all the way up. Like mine has a temperature gauge on it. I think it goes up to like 500. I would also ensure that it was heated real nice and even too. Just don't let your significant other catch you. All right, guys. I guess I'll sign off with this pointing at the piece because, you know, uh, YouTube gives you a choice of three thumbnails for your video. <laughs> Guys, good luck with it. Hope this helped that I did the entire process. And uh, hope you get back up on the road soon. Take care.